In this episode, we're going to bring you all the way across Uruguay with us. From the historic center of Colonia del Sacramento to the modern beach town Punta del Este. We're going to share with you what our first impressions were and what you cannot miss during your trip to the most progressive country in the world. Oh, and in the end, I'm going to have a controversial opinion to share with you. But before we start, cue me the intro. I'm Gabe, and this is my wife, Bruna. We're both financial planners turned digital nomads, and we're currently on a seven-month trip around the globe. In this channel, we show you that it's possible to travel the world while working and maintaining a healthy work-life balance. Uruguay is a tiny country in South America, and it's known for being one of the most progressive countries in the world. It is also the safest country and has the highest literacy rate in the continent. We decided to visit Uruguay because we're spending a few days in Argentina. During our stay there, we found out that there was a ferry that took us from Buenos Aires to Colonia. We also learned that some people hop on that ferry in the morning just to visit Colonia and go back to Buenos Aires at night. The trip to Colonia was about an hour and 20 minutes and it was a nice and comfortable ride. There was even a duty-free shop and the ferry was about $100 per person round trip. We decided to rent a car for this trip to come and go freely to everywhere that we wanted to go. Having a car allows you not to be worried about the bus schedules or waiting for taxis or Uber. Car rentals usually start at $40 for the most basic versions, but we paid $55 for ours because we booked it last minute. If you're renting a car, keep in mind that there are a lot of speed trackers on the road and even in cities and the fine is not cheap so i recommend you using the app ways for navigation another important thing to point out here is that in colonia there are no ubers if you don't have a car you're gonna have to order a taxi but don't worry the city center is tiny and you can do most things walking speaking of colonia this town is an amazing place for a day trip or to spend your weekend. With a population of a little over 30,000 people, Colonia is one of the oldest towns in Uruguay and is home to a very rich history. If you're into European architecture, history, or just walking around and taking pictures, this place might just be the right fit for you. I got to admit, Bruna and I aren't the most enthusiastic people when it comes to history or architecture, but this place stole our hearts. We were mesmerized by the picturesque corners and the beautiful structures we encountered. During your stay here in Colonia, we recommend you taking a stroll by the river and soaking in the views, visiting the lighthouse, and if possible, climbing up for a panoramic view, and also checking out the Puerta de la Ciudadela. For breakfast, we highly recommend you visiting Albertine. Their coffee is delicious, the food was very good, and service was also great. We also visited a few restaurants, but only one that's really worth mentioning. The place we went that had the best food was Napo Pizza, and it had one of the most delicious pizzas we've ever tried. We ordered a pizza with fresh mozzarella, and let me tell you, these images do not do justice to how good this pizza was. They had a 4.6 rating on Google and over 1,500 views. We went to a few other restaurants in Colonia, but none of them stood out, and honestly, prices there can get pretty hefty. And prices compared to even going out to eat back in the United States. So we were just getting coffee here in Colonia. We're just about to leave. And we just learned that if you use your credit card, you get a 18% discount. There's a law here in Uruguay. It's called Ley 18999 that says that foreigners get discounts to promote tourism, something like that. So it's better to use your credit card if you have like a Visa or a MasterCard that doesn't uh, charge foreign transaction fees. It's better to use your credit card everywhere you go because you automatically get an 18% discount. If you have some free time and want to relax, it's worth visiting Playa Ferrando. The water is brownish due to the river's natural occurrences, but the beach is empty and the water is super calm. If you're spending the night there, don't forget to watch the sunset over Rio de la Plata in the historic center. Now that we're done with Colonia, time to head to the capital of Uruguay, Montevideo. This was a two hour drive. Montevideo's population is of 1.5 million people, which is virtually half of the whole country's population. It is known for being Uruguay's cultural hub and economic center. We were recommended by friends to stay in Positos, which is an upper middle class neighborhood and is home to the best beach in Montevideo. 
In our first day in Positos, we got to roam by the shore and see what was going on. And to our surprise, we found a group of people playing samba by the beach. We stopped for a few minutes and enjoyed the show. <laughs> Keep in mind, this was a Sunday, so there were many people walking around and enjoying the day. We felt right at home and we were excited for the next few days. Unfortunately, it rained the whole time we were there and we found out that there aren't many things to do there in general, especially when the sun isn't out. Because of this, we ended up spending most of our days in the hotel, getting work done and playing ping pong, going out only for runs at the beach. In my honest opinion, if you're running tight on time and you want to visit some cool places in Uruguay, you should surely skip Montevideo and go to either the West Coast for the historic centers or the East Coast for the nature and beaches. Despite not having many fun things to do in Positos, they have great restaurants, including La Otra, famous for its delicious meat, and La Chingada, a Mexican-style restaurant that not only had delicious burritos and quesadillas, but offered a nice array of sauces. Now onto our final destination and my absolute favorite one, Punta del Esche. But before we move forward, please subscribe to our channel so you can join us in our next adventures. From Montevideo, it was a two hour drive to Punta del Esche. The road is beautiful, which makes it a very pleasant drive. This city is not what I expected it to be. It looked like Miami, but in South America. Luxurious buildings near the water, expensive cars, and good looking people. We didn't care much for the beaches as we've seen many other beautiful beaches across the world, but the modern architecture and the feeling that we had of being safe the whole time was incomparable to any other experience up until now. We found out that the high season is between Christmas and Carnival. If you don't know what Carnival is, check out the video that we made about Rio's Carnival. We arrived there a month after Carnival and realized that indeed the peak season had ended. Despite the pleasant weather, the city was deserted. Many places were closed, especially the beach clubs. A city known for its parties and nightlife seemed like a ghost town at night. But that didn't stop us from enjoying the city. The first thing to do in Punta is to take a photo with the famous hand coming out of the sand. La Manu is located in the peninsula between Playa Mansa and Playa Brava. And speaking of playas, as I've mentioned before, they are not the most beautiful beaches we've ever seen. The water is cold and murky due to the brown river that flows into the sea. And in my opinion, the best beach is Playa Mansa because of the water that is calmer and bluer. One place that you cannot miss is Casa Pueblo. Casa Pueblo is a building constructed by a Uruguayan artist and it was his summer home and workshop. Today it serves as a museum, an art gallery, a cafeteria, a hotel, and a famous spot to watch the sunset. There's a sunset ceremony where they play the artist's poems while the sun sets in the ocean. Another super cool spot we visited was Museo del Mar. We're not big fans of museums, but this one won our hearts. Full of interesting facts, whale skeletons, replicas of animals, shells of all types and sizes, antiques, and even a simulation of what the seedbed looks like. It's worth visiting. The ticket costs us $6 per person. As we had some free time, we took the opportunity to visit Jose Ignacio Lighthouse. This is a 50 minute drive from Punta del Esche, but the journey is so pleasant that you hardly notice. On one side, there's the sea, and the other side, stunning houses and buildings. Punta del Esche was a huge contrast to Colonia del Sacramento, and it makes you feel like you're traveling from the past to the future. Literally, everywhere we ate, the food was delicious. The prices were comparable to those in the United States, like I mentioned before, and the best meal we had was Zazu, located in the port area in the city center. We also wanted to go to Cabo Polonio, which is a very small town that practically has no electricity, let alone Wi-Fi. But it would have been another two and a half hour drive in the eastward direction. But getting there requires a 4x4 and more times on our hands that we didn't have, so we'll make that visit next time we come back to Uruguay. Uruguay wasn't a country that was on my list, but Bruna really wanted to visit. I ended up being surprised and loved exploring the country. It's definitely worth the visit, although it's not a cheap destination. 
And now it's time for the controversial part. Having traveled to Argentina and Uruguay, I can tell you that based on my opinion, Uruguay had a better cuisine than Argentina. Everything we ate was delicious. Let me know what you think in the comment below. Which one do you prefer? And if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and like it and follow us in our next adventures. Next country is going to be Colombia.